Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit, and today we are back with another episode of Low End Tech. Now, what we're going to be discussing today is operating systems. If you've seen previous episodes of what I've been doing with the Raspberry Pi, our go-to operating system is the Raspbian. That's because on the Raspberry Pi B, they used the ARM6 architecture. Now, when they made that move from ARM6 to ARM7, that unlocked a lot of possibilities for other operating systems to come in. Now, you're going to see like Android was ported to the Raspberry Pi. Now, Windows 10 is on the Raspberry Pi. And what I'm going to be installing today is Ubuntu right here, right now. Alright guys, so um, there's actually an official version of Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi which you could actually get from Ubuntu.com or there you could say the unofficial version from Ubuntu Mate which is the version that we are going to be using because this version is actually optimized for the Raspberry Pi and it includes a lot of the software that otherwise you would need to install if you use the, the um, official version. Now, we're going to need the software to install it into our SD card, which is the Win32 Disk Imager. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for all of this, and I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the Ubuntu Mate also. Now, following down, if you're going to download it, I would recommend using the BitTorrent so you don't lag their servers. And I actually have an episode on how to create a torrent server. I'm going to leave a card in the description above. Um, go check that out. And here, after we're done downloading, I actually saved all the files to my desktop. And you're going to be presented with this BZ2 file. And when you extract it using W7-zip, you're going to have the Ubuntu Mate ISO file. Now, with the Ubuntu Mate ISO file, all you need is open your Win32 disk imager. You're going to load in the file, and then click the right button, and then cue the music. All right, now that we're done with writing onto our SD card, we're gonna take this, stick it in a Raspberry Pi, and boot it up. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the first time I'm booting, so there might be a lot of time lapse. I can't tell you for sure yet because I have not done this yet. And you're presented with uh, Plymouth, actually. It's pretty cool. Um, we get our own loading screen instead of seeing all those uh, mumbo jumbo of words. I actually enjoy this a little bit better than uh, looking at those words. That was actually pretty quick. Supposedly, um, it takes a while to get this operating system booted for the first time. Or maybe there's a lot more that's supposed to happen that I don't know yet. Obviously right now it's not running in 1080. That's why I still get the borders on the side. I'm hoping once it boots up, it'll run into 1080. Right, there's our system configuration menu for the first time. All right, now that we're back, one of the things that we do need to do that I completely forgot actually was to resize the file system. Now, taking a look at um, what this says over here, it's 3.5 and I used 3.1. And we do need to um, resize this because I am running on a 16 gigabyte um, SD card. So to do this, F disk, I mean sudo F disk dev MMC BLK zero. Type in the password that you entered earlier. Now that we're in here, you want to delete the second partition, which is D2. And then you want to recreate it after you get out of this. Uh, you want to recreate it using N primary two. Enter, enter, and then. Uh, enter and then you see it's size of 14.9 gigabytes right okay uh, I have to reboot all right after the reboot is completed sudo resize 2fs dev mmc blk 0 p2 
into that password. Now if I df.h, you're gonna notice that it's 15 gigs and use 3.2. Now that we got our file size uh, all completed, I was working on something else before and I am gonna try to copy a video file from one of my servers over to here and check out the VLC media player. Okay. Let's check out how VDA, VLC media player will handle a video file that I converted for my digital media collection. Now, if you want to know more about that, you can check out my other video about the Plex Media Server on Raspberry Pi. I'll leave a card and a link in the descriptions below about this. Open file, video, Firefly. Okay, I hear audio, but I don't really see any video. And I know this part is supposed to have video. Let me skim a little. looks like it's having a hard time playing it. Okay, so we now know that VLC Media Player is not linked to uh, OMX Player. Now, OMX Player is a hardware um, acceleration for video. So let's try OMX Player. Let's go to Video, Firefly, Play. And this will actually take up the whole screen and play in 1080. Okay, so we know this GUI player will definitely work for full screen. Now let's go check out some other stuff. I know Firefox is uh, installed. If you like Firefox or Chrome, you can install other, uh, other browsers in here. Uh, I'm gonna check out YouTube. And let's see how it plays. Uh, let's play the Superman one. For full desktop, this actually is very responsive. Uh, I know that they used uh, 64 megs of RAM for video graphics. So I chopped off 64. And it's actually very smooth playing on HTML5. Look at that. I'll let you guys make the judge of this, but so far this desktop is actually uh, more responsive than the Debian desktop that we installed earlier. Or I'll leave a link in the descriptions again for that video too. Um, it also includes a lot of the software that Debian has. Now, if you're going to use the official Ubuntu version, you're not going to get any of this. You're going to have to compile and install everything from scratch, like this Scratch programmer or um, the OMX player and all this other stuff that is pre-compiled uh, when you download the Ubuntu Mate version. And also, most notably, but I don't know if you guys would have even care about it, but it's using the newest kernel. Uh, when you use the official Ubuntu version, you're stuck with the kernel 3.18, while if you download this version of Mate, you will get 4.1.10, which is a much faster kernel than the 3.18. That's probably why it makes it so snappy. All right, I'm going to shut this down. So there you have it guys, Ubuntu installed to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've only been using it for a few moments and I feel that it's actually much more responsive than Raspbian. Uh, maybe because it's the optimized version and they did some stuff or maybe it's the new kernel that uh, allows it to work better. I'm not really too sure but I'm going to be giving it a few months, uh, testing it out a little bit and maybe I'll put a part two of this and uh, let you know what my response are. If you guys got any future episode ideas, I would love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. If you guys have any questions about this episode, you can also put them in the comments below. And remember to subscribe. It helps me a lot. It also gives you notification of when the next video is going to be out. And remember, hack till it hurts.
Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you want to watch more videos like this, I'll post a link right here.